Now, gee, uh, I was curious. You, you know, you had you you didn't have a lot of uh, firsthand contact with Frank uh, Reich when he was here, since you guys run different sides of the ball. But I mean, what what's he been like as a head coach there, a first time head coach? Oh, Frank has been awesome, man. He's he's been awesome and energetic. Um, like you said, I didn't have a lot of like firsthand contact with him, but I would see him throughout practice. You know, when we would go at the offense back in Philly. And um, he was always one of those coaches, you know, you knew he knew everything. You knew he knew what was going on. And now as a head coach, you actually get to see him actually do it, you know, get involved and and walk on both sides of the ball. So having him here, man, it's a blessing. Are there any similarities between him and Doug in your mind? Oh, it's a lot. You know, just from the way they act, man, you know, you get two guys around each other for so long, being the backups and, uh, you know, playing with each other. Uh, Him and Doug. They have some of the same mannerisms as far as, you know, how they want to practice, how they want to play, and how aggressive they are. You know, you can see that by watching the game tape. And the one cool thing about Frank is you don't think he's going to say anything, but Frank always got something to say. Hey, Najee, people from Tampa last week were saying that that Vinnie Curry and Bo Allen really brought their Super Bowl experience down there and, and helped the locker room with that. How have you helped the Colts locker room based on what you experienced last year in Philly? Really just about bringing, you know, an absolute mentality, man. I talked to the guys here, and, you know, it's nothing like playing in that game. You know, that game will go down forever, especially after the, you know, the marquee plays that was made in it and the fact that I was able to go out there and lead the team and special teams tackles and make some plays on defense and bring that here to the you know, to the organization. And, you know, they've, they've done it before. They they have had Super Bowls here, and they they understand what that's like in the front office. So to have a guy like me that's able to, you know, be current and remind the guys that, you know, what Jabal and I hear, that, you know, that anything is possible. It's not always the best talent you team, but it's about the guys that do stuff right. So, you know, that's the thing that we're doing here, and, you know, that's what we're going to carry out through the rest of the season. Najee, you mentioned the uh, special teams here. Uh, this Early on, with because of injuries and playing so many young guys, uh, you guys weren't as good as you were th- the year before. But going down the stretch and in the playoffs, uh, you were playing your best football on special teams. Uh, how imp- I mean, what caused that? Uh, I mean, you had to go through some rough spots early to to kind of gel towards the end with a lot of those young guys. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just getting them involved. You know, young guys are as hungry to play and. In that setting, in that situation, man, we needed them to play their best at the most valuable time. And it was cool, man. It was cool to see those guys rise up. It was cool to see them go through that, you know, that maturation process through 16 weeks. And here we've just had it longer. You know, I've been here for, you know, five, six months and been able to be with this team and do the same thing with these young guys here. And, you know, when we were when I was back in Philly, that was one thing, like, Kamu stepped up, Nate Gary stepped up, and uh, some other guys that are contributing now, few contributors on the team now. So it's definitely going to be a force to reckon with. But that that maturation process of teaching and learning and every week just taking one step, you know, in one area to get better is, like, the main thing. Najee, how, how different is that, is the market out there, Indianapolis, com- compared to, like, Philadelphia? What are, what are, like, some of the differences, the fans and the market? Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot different, man. You – for one, you don't get the fans throwing batteries and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, you know, we got some rowdy fans. And the city, man, it's, it's different when you come from, you know, a team that is uh, it's a lot of city mode. You know, it's a um, – Philadelphia has that rough grit to them that, you know, you, you got to live to learn and love. You know, when you're doing bad, they're going to tell you. When you're doing good, they're going to tell you. And they do the same things here, but um, it's a little bit up more in your face. And with here – you know, you can see that that uh, this media presence and, and the team and everything like that, it's, it's sort of the same way. But, you know, as we get to winning more and as we, you know, make this big push that, are, you know, how we doing it, you can see that those guys are getting involved. But, um, it's a, it was, you know, it's been primarily an offensive team here and back in the past with Peyton Manning. And, you know, we got Andrew, and now we got this defense that's playing fiery. So um, you can see the city, um, the, the Indianapolis coach and the fans here, they're they starting to get to that. They want to see the – you know, the big hits, and they want to see the guys running to the ball, so that's what you're doing. You were in this, you shared the same room uh, with uh, Nigel last year, Najee. Uh, I mean, he had a sensational season. I mean, talk about w- what he brings 
to not only to on the field to that defense, but but also to the meeting room to the, you know just the the physicality, the the attitude that he that he brings to that defense. Oh, Nigel is a dog, man. That's my boy. He a beast, man. We came out together. Well, we still behind each other at the combine, and you know we've been close ever since. And like you know, I I love playing with him because you know that at the end of the day, he gonna do whatever he gotta do to get his job done. And you know that's how he play. That's just that's just one thing about him. Like you said, the physicality from back from college all the way to now, man. That's that's one thing that he brings to that defense and the leadership stepping in when guys went down that him and I had to you know step up and bring. You know, it was no question. Nigel ain't going to be the loudest one, but on that field, he definitely going to say something. I'm pretty sure y'all seen his head moving around after each play when he make a big hit or he make a play. But, you know, that's what's cool about him, man. He's competitive. The dude like to compete. So it's definitely going to be something that our offense is going to have to make sure that they sustain that high intensity. Najee, the Eagles' offense through the first two games has been very inconsistent, quite different than when you were here. What have you noticed in the film room scouting this team? Uh, just, you know, they, they've had some mishaps, you know, with – basics you know and the thing is like it's they've had mishaps because you know from when I was there like you said it we Carson threw 33 touchdowns falls with the MVP you know it was bombs over Baghdad left and right <laughs> but uh um the main thing we can see you know is they they just they trying to get key players in the right places and you know some of that's been happening some of it hasn't against Atlanta they were able to run the ball at the end of the game and break off some of the bigger runs that they had you know that we did in the past when I was there but um you know, that's it's just it comes along with learning in the first couple of weeks, and and every season is a new season. So, you know, the main thing I can see right now is that you know that they play hard, and you know they they missed a few uh, blocks maybe here or there, but the guys are definitely playing hard, and that's one thing that our defense is going to do to you know stop that. Getting back to their special teams quickly, Najee. Uh, I mean, you're gone. Trey Trey's gone. Uh, Brian Brayman didn't resign. A lot of key guys. Uh, when you've watched the film, what's been your impressions at least of the, in the first two games of their special teams? I think that their special teams is definitely still, you know, top market, especially with Coach Phipp, Coach and, and Coach Harper. Them dudes, man, they, they preach just like we preach here and just like they preach there, you know, running to the ball. And it's, it's, it's changed a little bit body style-wise because, you know, uh, Brayman and I, we were bigger bodies that could still run and get down the field. And Trey was a savvy guy playing over the top and making plays. But, you know, they still got Kamu there and Nate. And I know they signed with Roy Reynolds. And uh, Jake still booting the ball. I used to call Jake the golden toe until I got to see Ben and Terry kick. And that's the, you know, that's the real golden toe. <laughs> so, you know, um, the main thing I can see right now with the special teams is that they, they change up a little bit of the flavor, but they still play hard. Is that uh, Mustang still running good? Man, that thing is running like a beast. <laughs> it's running like a beast. I put my car up against anybody in the league. No, that's that's uh, that's pretty strong. Yeah. Hey, Naj, uh, have you been able to talk to Michael Kendricks about what's happened with him? Uh, and were you surprised by that? Uh, I talked to Mike a few times, but not necessarily about what happened. You know, I, I know he's gone through a lot with um, – but to just uh, being signed and then being released, you know, just to keep his head in the right spot. I talked to him the day that they played the uh, Monday night game against the Bears about, you know, just him, you know, playing hard and keeping focused. But, you know, Mike's a good dude, and he got caught up in some crazy, unfortunate situations. Like, I know that in the article, I saw that the league was, like, didn't know how to look at it. I mean, we didn't either. I, mean, I didn't think that he was going to be in that circumstance or situation. And, I mean, regardless, he's still a hell of a player. You see, he can come out on Monday night after not playing and, go out there and actually do something. So uh, I think that he's going to be, you know, he's handling it the best way he can. And uh, anytime you get into the stuff with the law, man, you just got to, you know, make sure you cooperate and doing the right things. And I think that's what he's doing. And uh, I know the birds let him go, but, you know, he's definitely um, doing what he has to do. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dodgy.